Hello friends, James Stevenson back with a special report on Tesla full self-driving beta. Is it trying to murder Dan O'Dowd, Ross Gerber, and anyone else they share the road with? If you ask the Tesla Q, short sellers, haters, and trolls, they will tell you yes. Uh, in this video, I will delve into that question with some research I conducted on Twitter. Let's check in with uh, Loki, who is curled up in bed napping uh, and uh, not performing his co-host duties very well after having eaten his breakfast this morning. Then I'll share my desktop with you. You'll be able to tell how much progress we've made throughout the video as I work my way down this list of tabs I have pulled up on Twitter. Here's the first one. This is the topic of today's video. It's a tweet from Dan O'Dowd, at real Dan O'Dowd on Twitter. This is an independent, unbiased researcher uh, just trying to promote the, the public uh, safety uh, and health and well-being of his fellow citizens. I'm kidding. He's the founder and CEO of a rival self-driving software company called Green Hill Software. I know everybody knows that, but I thought I would just add that information for anyone who may be unaware. Dan O'Dowd is a direct competitor uh, trying to uh, get FSD, uh, trying to make FSD illegal uh, is basically the gist of it with his uh, Dan project. I'm sorry, the Dawn project is what he calls it. Uh, what's this tweet say? In my ride along with Ross Gerber, Tesla full self-driving ran a stop sign at 35 miles per hour. That's a remarkable claim. If Ross hadn't slammed on the brakes, FSD would have T-boned a car obeying the rules. FSD tried to kill us in an hour of city driving. Everyone should demand it be banned immediately at Nitsagov. Okay, so I'm not going to show you uh, this whole video uh, very many times. But, uh, well, actually, this is way, way too far uh, back, so I'm not going to show you that at all right now. Uh, we'll get to Dylan Loomis in a minute. Uh, what uh, I wanted to show you here was just the engagement this tweet has gotten. About 3 million views. That's a lot. Uh, 1,600 retweets, 236 quote tweets. If you don't know, you can click on this, and it'll give you uh, all the uh, quote tweets, times that people have retweeted it along with their own commentary, uh, that you're allowed to see. So sometimes people who have retweeted it will have blocked you, and you can't see how they retweeted it. Um, 8,700 likes, 314 bookmarks. Okay, so a lot of engagement on this video. A lot of people believing all of Dan O'Dowd's claims, but are they true? Uh, first of all, let's go down the list of Tesla short sellers, haters, trolls, and skeptics and how they retweeted this. Here's one from Pabst Street Capital Management at PBR Street Gang 7. Full agreement is how he captioned his retweet. At Zero Shorts retweeted, Yup, hashtag Tesla Q, hashtag Tesla, hashtag FSD, hashtag FSD Beta. James Boltard at James Boltard 7 captioned it, I love this, with four heart emojis. Uh, Elon Unplugged captioned it, This is madness. Why does Elon Musk have a different set of laws and human experiment requirements than everyone else? Uh, so just introducing new false claims to a, a tweet that already has enough, uh, in my judgment, which we'll, we'll go into more in a bit. Here's fun with numbers, with a Z. Uh, Captioning it, in four hours since this was posted, the tweet of Tesla full self-driving blowing a stop sign at 35 miles per hour has garnered over 187,000 views. Wouldn't surprise me if Elon Musk somehow has it taken down or adds community notes. Probably not going to happen. Here's one from Jurabalis. The regulators are still sleeping at the wheel. Elron is untouchable. Full self-driving while being an obvious scam, better referred to as hashtag slaughter pilot, will continue to create profit margin for Tesla. They don't care about public safety. Hashtag Tesla Q told you so. All right. Here's one from Grant Belden. True. 
half a second away from a head-on collision. This tech did not make anyone safer in this instance. Other car could have reactively swerved and hurt themselves. Uh, at Nitsagov, for the love of God, do your job. A few others with a similar take. Uh, Roland at Steel Nicho on Twitter. Hey, Nitsagov, what are you doing about it? Here's one from Electro Joy. This is such a dangerous thing for us all. I don't want to be killed for Elon Musk to get rich on selling a lie and making us, the crash test dummies, tagging Secretary Pete Buttigieg along with Nitsa. Why do you let this happen? This is so dangerous. Three angry face emojis. Uh, here's how Karthik S. Uh, captioned it. Uh, Gerber Kawasaki on almost getting T-boned, or, or almost T-boning someone else, I'm sure he meant, uh, to say, humans have to be engaged. At Elon Musk's Cult of Morons, Robotaxis later this year, uh, I assume he thinks these people are Elon Musk's Cult of Morons, including, uh, you know, MIT research scientist Lex Friedman, okay. Uh, and here's one of the ones, one of the retweets that I can't show you because Taylor Ogan blocks me. I'm sure this has been retweeted by many other people who block me and are members of Tesla Q in good standing. Taylor just reiterated the, the lie, <laughs> I'll call it that at this point in the video from Dan O'Dowd, that a Tesla on full self-driving blew through a stop sign at 35 miles per hour and nearly collided with two cars. All right, we'll, we'll see some video a little bit later on, but that's all the Tesla Q takes I'm giving you. Let's find some other opinions. Here's one from Dylan Loomis. There's a reason we all and Tesla keep saying the driver is still responsible at all times and must be ready to take over. What point is Dylan making here? He's answering the question, was FSD at fault for this? The answer is always no. Why is the answer always no? Because every time you engage full self-driving in your Tesla, the screen pops up with a warning telling you that you, the human driver, the person sitting behind the steering wheel, the person whose feet are over the pedals, you are responsible for your safety and for the safety of your passengers at all times. Don't let the car do anything dangerous while you're driving it, and at all points in time, your feedback is prioritized over FSDs. Even if what you want to do is less safe than what FSD wants to do, whatever the input is from the human driver takes priority. So, uh, I'll walk through those very quickly for you. If you decide to uh, take control of the steering, to change the steering from what FSD does, you disengage FSD. It turns off and you are, as the human driver, fully responsible for steering the vehicle using the steering wheel, right? Another one is if you apply the accelerator, if you take your foot and you push on the accelerator pedal, your acceleration uh, feedback is prioritized. If FSD wants to slow down and you want to speed up, the car will speed up following the human's uh, input. If you want to brake, the car will slow down and, and you know stop if you hold the brake pedal down long enough. Uh, whether the car wants to go or not, whether FSD would have accelerated or not, if the human driver presses the brake, the car stops. I hope this is very clear at this point. Human driver input is prioritized higher than FSD input. That's what Dylan Loomis is saying here. And I'll continue with his note here to take one anecdote from one FSD drive that is statistically already safer than a driver without these features and then suggest banning FSD is ridiculous and disingenuous. 40,000 people die annually from auto accidents in the U.S. alone, Dylan meant to say. We need this technology to continue improving, and Tesla is the best chance we have. He's right on all points, but let's go further. Uh, here's a tweet from Masterplan replying, that's just not true. See the footage. Ross was pressing the accelerator until one second before the stop. Why? Ask Ross. First pick, you can't see the accelerator. Second pick, you can. So here's Ross's foot on the accelerator. 
here's the stop sign. Ross was applying the accelerator. That's why the car was doing 37 miles per hour at this moment. Whether FSD wanted to be slowing down or not, if the human driver is applying the accelerator, the car is not going to brake, right? And the warning pops up on the screen telling you that uh, when you do it uh, for a prolonged uh, period of time. Uh, here's the next photo showing Ross's foot not on the accelerator because he moved it over to the brake and was braking at this point in the video. Okay, let's go to the next uh, tweet here. If I can get my mouse to work, there it is. Uh, Compulize. Uh, update to correction, Ross stopped before the line. Nobody, not Ross, not FSD Beta, ran any stop sign. What did Dan O'Dowd say? He said, full self-driving ran a stop sign at 35 miles per hour. What actually happened? The Tesla stopped before the line, before entering the intersection, the Tesla stopped. So not only did FSD not run the stop sign, the stop sign was not run at all at any speed. Uh, the next tweet, let's ask Ross Gerber, uh, the driver of the car, for his take. It's clear that I was in control 10 feet before the stop sign and FSD was disengaged before encountering any of the vehicles. What he means is when he applied the brake pedal, FSD disengaged, which is true. Um, his, uh, his version of events may be more complimentary to himself than is warranted under the circumstances. Here's a tweet from at G3ST4L1 on Twitter. Uh, well, let's see here. Yes, FSD is running a stop sign because the stop line is behind the stop sign. Gerber Kawasaki disengagement, uh, this is Ross Gerber, because the white truck seems to be cutting the stop line, hard to see on the video. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got a photo of this intersection. Now when you watch the video, you see the car um, move past the stop sign before stopping. That would be alarming if you did not know the context of this intersection is that this stop sign is located here and the line to stop with the word stop doesn't happen for another 30 feet past the stop sign, right? So if you're worried that at the point in the video when the Tesla passes the stop sign, it has run the stop sign, you're wrong. The line that uh, marks the start of the intersection doesn't happen for 40 feet past the stop sign, and the Tesla does stop before reaching that line. Next tweet from Half Charged Blog at 036 on the video, you can actually see stopping for stop sign on the display, and the blue line was ending where the white line indicates where to stop for the stop sign. Ross was just not ready to wait for it to emergency brake. Okay, so what do we see here? Well, if we had a Chuck Cook video set up, there would be a very crisp image here of stopping for stop sign appearing on the screen. FSD knew there was a stop sign, and FSD would have stopped at um, a more comfortable pace for the people inside the vehicle had Ross not been applying the accelerator uh, with his foot. And the last tweet we're going to show you in this video comes from Sean Carr, at Sean Corelli on Twitter, who went through the video and noted the series of events and the pacing uh, with which they occurred. I'll play you this video and uh, call out the moments as they happen. Let me back it up to the beginning. <laughs> All right, there's the sign warning you that a stop sign is coming. But, um, What's Ross doing? He's setting the speed from 40 to 35. That's not what you should do when, if you know there's a stop sign coming. Ross just missed it. Now he sees there's a stop sign. Now he moves his foot off the accelerator to the brake and applies the brake, and that disengages FSD. He still stops before entering the intersection. What's deceptive about the video is you see the white SUV coming across and believe that it is in the intersection, but it's not. It was trying to cut the corner across the lane that is reserved for but, um, traffic coming from this direction to the intersection. That white SUV was trying to make um, a smoother corner. 
and Ross just approached the intersection oh. too fast uh, in his Tesla Model S and applied a lot of late braking here. So those are the circumstances of this uh, of this accident. Maybe what I should do on this playthrough is actually call out what Sean Carr called out. Okay, there's the stop sign coming. Warning. But um, Ross's foot still on the accelerator, slowing down from 40 to 35. There's where you can see the stop sign if you're paying attention. FSD visualizes the stop sign. Ross moves his foot off the accelerator onto the brake. And stopping for stop sign appears on the screen because FSD had been engaged right before Ross hit the brake. It knew there was a stop sign and it was trying to brake for it, but couldn't because Ross's foot was still on the accelerator. And that's what happened. Uh, how did Dan O'Dowd characterize the events? Uh, he characterized them this way. Uh, so let's read through it again. In my ride along with Ross Gerber, Tesla, full self-driving, ran a stop sign at 35 miles per hour. So it's untrue because full self-driving didn't run a stop sign and because the vehicle didn't do 35 miles per hour or anything close to it uh, through the intersection. The vehicle actually stopped before entering the intersection. If Ross hadn't slammed on the brakes, FSD would have T-boned a car obeying the rules. That's untrue because the reason Ross needed to slam on the brakes is because Ross had been applying the accelerator and wasn't as aware as he should have been that he needed to be slowing down for the stop sign. Would FSD have T-boned a car obeying the rules? No, it wouldn't have. Without Ross's input on the accelerator, FSD would have stopped in time for the intersection. FSD tried to kill us in an hour of city driving, uh, Dan O'Dowd says. What actually happened is FSD drove safely for the entire hour of city driving, uh, and the moment shown in the video clip was the human driver uh, making an error while driving, not seeing the stop sign soon enough, not slowing down soon enough which is one of the reasons why you need full self-driving is because human error is the cause of most accidents. Uh, everyone should demand it be banned immediately. Is that a true statement? No. So Dan O'Dowd managed to make untrue statements in every sentence of this tweet. And that is my video for today. Uh, we'll check back in with Loki in his bed, who is still curled up and sleeping. With that, I'll say, if you've enjoyed today's video, why not click the like button or the subscribe button to my channel? It's free to do either of those things. Uh, thank you to everyone who supports my efforts, though, whether you do that through Patreon or on Twitter or on YouTube, as my two executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com, did at the top tier, earning them a shout-out and a thank you at the end of every video, and I'll see you in the next one.